unfortunately though, no one could be saved. Now, Jim, this night, in order to create an alibi for himself, he did go downtown, and at the time, Prohibition was very much active. Of course, you could go down the tunnel system and get your drink on shortly, but, so he didn't necessarily say, as an alibi, I was out drinking, but it was implied. So, after he murdered his family, um, Jim did go out to the bars. People thought that he smelled like gasoline, and he went out and socialized and things like that to establish an alibi while his family was literally burning to death. So he did try to construct that alibi, but it wasn't effective. Now, of his four family members, um, they obviously all died, but Mildred here was the longest one to survive. And when they barreled in after putting out the fire, they actually found her in the hallway. All of them still alive at that point, so they were able to put the fire out quickly. They all died at different times on this Tuesday. But Mildred was the longest to survive, and she told investigators, it was Daddy, Daddy did it, um, he dumped gasoline all over me, and then she passed away. So, Jim Foster was thankfully caught and tried for what he did at the Welsh County Courthouse. He was found guilty of murdering his family. He was taken to Canyon City where he was hanged, and then of course brought right back here to Greeley, Colorado, and he is buried in a mass grave with some of his um, other children who died in infancy, and of course the four that he was found guilty of murdering. Now, one crazy fact about this is that it was Jim's sisters-in-law, did I say that yes. right? Um, it was his wife's sisters that bought this grave. And allowed him to be buried here. And allowed him to be buried in the same grave with the uh -huh. three individuals he had killed. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. imagine someone murders your sister and you allow them to be buried with your sister in the same mm -hmm. grave. I don't know what their family dynamics were there, but it's a very disturbing case. Um, and then you guys are probably seeing that there's another name that died the same year. It's Bernice. Um, she was actually she killed herself after her family died because she thought she had nothing to live for. So and she's also buried here. So you Bernice? She was the oldest, oldest, but she wasn't home when it happened. She so was away at school. Victims of the fire were Darlene. You know, and it says their ages here. She was two years old, and this one was about four years old. Geraldine. All the ones that died in 1931 are the murder victim. Or you know, he also minus died. Bernice. But minus Bernice, who killed herself. So really a touching little memorial here. If you guys want to come investigate, please feel free. I think this might be a good one to use the dowsing rods at. It's pretty still and quiet here. Wow. Um. That's where the gas chamber is. The chair, yeah. I've been over there. I investigated over there. Mm -hmm. If you ever want to go there, you should walk around in there. Yeah, the it's like a museum. Seven, but it still has five I've been there. Yeah. Big tourist there. Pregnant with another, and he didn't think he could do it. There's a lot of speculation, but no, but he never gave a reason. Yeah, next year I have Abbey Monastery in, in there, and then I have Cripple Creek. I have the Hotel uh, Saint Nicholas, and the whole town That's wanted me to do. <laughs> So I'm going to be inviting a whole bunch of people to go. Is that the hotel that used to be the hospital? Yep. Yeah. We, I stayed in there and it was, yeah, that was weird. Yeah. So I rent it every year. I rent it every year and then I have people come in and, and stay there with me and do investigations. Yeah. That, that was a weird place. But this year I got the cemetery, the jail, and Villa Victor Villa the tunnels they all want me to do next year an oddity oddity store I'm gonna have some little flyers where you can um, it's I'm gonna have like a raffle it's a ten dollar raffle like anybody could go to the three different spots and what I'm going to do is pull the raffle out and whoever gets I pull gets to have the free weekend with me over there. Oh my God. So, so I bought the human skull out of there. 
My daughter did. Yeah. The that's the, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have little buckets here cool. pretty soon in there with them, and they're going to have the Check little things. And, yeah. and I have a raffle at the... Uh, I have yeah. three different events. Cool. That's cool. Yeah. So are you picking up energy here? A little bit, yeah. I've been. I've heard the little girl at the beginning, when what we do you were think way about over there at the. Grade? Uh, it was kind of making me nauseate. It was. It like made my heart like. It felt like something was like right here on my chest. Yeah, and like my, a little bit of nauseate. My, my gut. Yeah, it was weird. I didn't like it. No, oh, yeah. I. I had the dowsing like rods and I was like, I don't you're like, like, no, I don't want yeah, to. You I'm handed like, them to I me. Did. I handed them to you. I'm like, no. She's like, no, I, I don't want to. I, know I can do these, but I don't want to. I don't yeah. want this. Yeah, it was weird. Yeah, no, I didn't like it. it was oh, yeah, I feel all kinds of different energies. That's why I keep looking around because I hear them every once in a while. You'll hear like, like somebody walking through yeah. here behind us. I've been, I, yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, I do that all the time, girl. I turn around, I'm like, I heard you. <laughs> you, heard, you heard a little girl at the beginning? Yeah, she uh, greeted me at the, over there by the picnic tables. Okay, okay. Yeah. There's somebody, so when you walk out, so when we came out of the picnic tables and we walked down this way right here, there's somebody there. And the other day when we drove through here, when we saw this posted, we drove through here, and that's, I was like, whoa, what's, that's weird right there. Like, yeah. there's something right there. Yeah. Uh, it's weird. <laughs> All I know is I heard a little girl, and I was like, wait a minute, there's nobody that is a child that's with us. So, she just came up and said, hi. Uh, what we doing? That's what she said. What we doing? I said, <laughs> <laughs> wasn't where's the kid? Where's the kid? Where's the kid? <laughs> <laughs> they'll do that to me they'll come up and stuff sometimes I have to block it out though because otherwise they'll they'll follow us all over the place and huh. okay I'm not taking no pictures no more oh is he doing it is it finally going oh yeah Nice. I hope it's one of the kids but I can't help I don't know how long this might be a newer barker, but his children he had infants die in twenty six. Oh, one year from nineteen thirteen. Didn't live more than a month. Oh, one of them only lived a month. And then the one on the bottom I think was the same day. Roberta. And there should be another He had two kids die during Spanish flu, 1918. And then there's a, there should be another marker, but I think it's buried. There was like yeah, infants with no name somewhere. Right here underneath the... Thank you. Yeah, there should be like five infants in that one too. He had five kids that didn't have names? Yeah. Kids, well, when they, die, they, when they yeah. die before they're like actually born, like stillborn, oh. they don't give names. It was yeah. only if they lived, if that makes sense, or were baptized. What is that noise? Well, should we go to Jesse? Yeah, Troy's already over there. Perfect. We now just now head straight down this way. Sorry about that. Uh, we're we're going to go to the start I'm going to take a picture right here, though. Yeah, we're going to start with, we will end with. We'll end with. You see Troy over there? Okay, and there's no trench between here and there, just a lot of graves. <sighs> Let me get my light out. Or Mimi's gonna fall over everything. Yeah. No, I have a flashlight, dear. <laughs> I'm golden.
honor John's life for a moment. He, um, you know, accomplished great things in the town. He was very, very well known. He was, um, you know, in real good spirits. He loved the chapel. We put this down over here. And uh, there is significant evidence to suggest that Mr. John Jacobs kind of goes on the tunnel system and participates in some, shall we say, illegal bootlegging oh, okay. and things like that. That's so a good one. So Jeremy Baker set out here to build this great colony where no one would drink, and everyone found a way to drink, even the sheriffs, the town officials, the judges, all those guys were down there just raging it up. And actually, a lot of those tunnels would connect to the elite homes of Greeley, so somehow for the same reason you would see the same tunnels in your age of Pat's face all down like that. So, so essentially, you could go down the tunnels and go up to your buddy's house and have these drinks there and go hide in the tunnels again and go to your other buddy's house. It's a pretty wild time during Prohibition in Greeley. Mm. Um, but getting back to John Jacobs, so it's really sad. There's a, a long history of suicide in his family, um, multiple different methods, but many, um, there have been actually many John T. Jacobses, and uh, many of them have taken their own life. And from what we know about John is he did take his life and his was by possible hanging. I don't know if we have his exact cause of death, but um, so of course here is his final resting place. Now a lot of people think he haunts the Coronado. Go into the downtown oddity parlor, talk to Corey and Chase, talk to any of those shop owners in the Coronado and you will not be disappointed. But there can often be heavy footsteps heard in the building, kind of above, just sort of quiet, heavy um, footsteps, but not really a whole lot of interaction between John and the mediums, but some people think he is still there. Now, John Jacobs had a great-great-granddaughter. This was Jessica Jacobs. Now, when we talk about her, why don't we go around to the front in a moment, but just take a quick look at you, if you will, at the back of her tombstone. So we have WordWorks, and what that was was a business that she owned in California. Nonprofit. Oh, a nonprofit business, thank you. She was a mother, an artist, an atheist. She was a very much self-proclaimed atheist and truly a witch. Uh, she was not down with the um, Christianity viewpoint, shall we say. Animal rights advocate, which we'll tell you about the animal rights in just a moment too, but why don't you guys kind of come around here and see the front of her grave. We have noticed it feels very, very peaceful right here. I'm gonna take a picture of this here. Look how gorgeous this is. Can we just take so those feathers are hanging over there, just so you know. Um, because they're doing all this work, they had to pull them out. But they normally go right in between. Oh, okay. Just so you know, if you ever come back and don't see them there, they don't go there. Um, the part is the world. I don't know if you can see it down there, it might be covered by the flashlights. But the world is representative in the world. Oh, I wanted to get that part right there. Nope. You're good. Yellow car. I was going to say red or orange. A yellow car that says Greeley Witch on it. I don't know whatever mm -hmm. became mm -hmm. of that car. Her, Her son has it. Yep. Are you serious? Yeah. So Why haven't I been? Do we have her address? Uh, is that no, okay, Jesse? I'm, sure is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I want to go see her car. So she was an iconic woman. Now, do you guys see her? She just died a few years ago. So she, as I mentioned, was a relative of John Jacobs. So she didn't always live in Greeley, though she was born here and she spent years here. But she actually did go to Southern California and she began that business we were just telling you about, that nonprofit. That business is still standing to this day. But Jesse Jacobs did all kinds of other amazing things. Major animal rights activist. Um, have you guys ever seen the kitty in the Coronado building? Do you? Oh, the name of the jewelry shop is no. escaping me. Yes, Spooky the Cat. He, he, he is so cute. Jewelry shop either right now. <laughs> the jewelry shop right it's next, next to the Coronado barber shop. <laughs> next to the barber shop, right across from the courthouse. Spooky the cat showed up like right after she passed away, and he keeps finding a way into the business, and no one can figure out how to like keep him out. He would just get back in every time, and he has parked his adorable little self right there in that window front. You will. He's so cute. <laughs> we think that he's a familiar of Jesse Jacobs. That would kind of make sense that she has an animal. She does make her presence. Jesse and my family definitely wants the Coronado, and I definitely think she's present here at her grave. She has made it very known to us as well as the Paranormal, as the shop owners there, um, at the 
lobotomy time, she's been it very known through psychic mediums. Jessie has communicated that she is very much in the Coronado and is watching over the women of the building. Women's rights, all that kind of stuff. That was totally her jam. Now, if you come on our downtown Hollywood Historic Tour, we'll tell you all about the women-owned businesses in the Coronado. But the bottom line is that there's many businesses that are just thriving in that particular building um, that are women-owned. And I definitely think Jesse Jacobs has something to do with it. And uh, she's just a really beautiful soul. I never got to meet her, but maybe very one or two people who did. She made herself very known in the town. But uh, come on up if you guys would like and just kind of take a moment at her grave. It just feels very very peaceful and lovely. Beloved mother and artist, bless the beasts and the children. You guys want to hear her views on Christianity? My God wields a hammer. Your God was nailed to a cross. You do the math. Yeah, she had a good sense of humor. <laughs> she actually designed this before she died, so it was something that she knew she wanted. And you might notice there's gifts at the bottom. It's because people in town who also practice or practice with her will leave gifts and take gifts that were left. Because uh, as part of what she practiced, uh, give and take was a big thing. So if you give something, you take something, and it gives you her energy pretty much. But don't take anything unless you're giving it. I wonder if she likes Snickers. Hey, Jesse. <laughs> what the heck? That was just weird. <laughs> I sit here. You know how my purse, you know how your purse is on your side right here? Yeah. It got pushed a little bit. She's here. She's like, what? <laughs> Just clump, 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 clump. <laughs> Thanks, Jesse. This is the first time I think I've worked on it. Is Spooky the cat? You're a little guy that you're that you're guiding and watching over. Are you familiar? Okay. What was that? That's 